السلام على من جعل الله الشفاء في تربته السلام على من الإجابة تحت قبته السلام على من الأئمة من زريته السلام على ساكن كربلا أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين الصلاة والسلام على إشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين خاتم النبيين بالقاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى آله الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين المنتجبين الهداة المهديين لا سيما بقية الله في الأرضين روحي وارواه العالمين في مقدمه الفدا ولعنة الدائمة على أعدائهم مجمعين من الآن إلى قيام يوم الدين أما بعد فقد قال الله سبحانه وتعالى في محكم الكتاب المبين وهو أستق الصادقين وقوله الحق بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل اللهم مالك الملك تؤتي الملك من تشاء وتنزع الملك من تشاء وتعز من تشاء وتذل من تشاء بيدك الخير إنك على كل شيء قدير Sadaq Allahu al-Aliyu al-Azim Dear respected brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us amongst the helpers and the soldiers of the Imam of our time, Imam Sahib al-Asri wa'l-Zaman, Ajjallahu Faraj al-Sharif The discussion that we touched upon was under the banner of dignity and freedom and honor in the life of Imam Hussain alayhi salam and we realized that in our previous five nights, we discussed and we analyzed in depth about how Imam Hussein salam taught us to be free from any tyrant, oppressor, or anyone that wants to rule in against the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we will give you the summary of the five nights and inshallah then we will continue upon the further in depth. But... What did Imam Hussain salam give us ultimately as a lesson? What did he teach us? He taught us in great depth from the day that he left Medina till the day that he placed his head on the soil of Karbala was that do not stand with the oppressors. Do not stand with the tyrants do not stand with the ones that disrespect other people do not stand with the people that have just injustice to other people stand with the truth stand with greatness stand with goodness this is what imam hussein alayhi salam taught us and ultimately stand with dignity stand with honor stand against oppression this is what imam alayhi salam has given us all we have to do is take it from Imam and practice it in our lives. We understand that the difference between izzat, having dignity, and zillat, which is shamefulness, humiliation, is very different, is opposed to one another. So when one wants to be respected, when one wants to be honoured, when one wants to have that dignity for himself, he has to take on goodness. He has to be good to the people like in our previous talk. Ahsan ilayhim. You have to be good to the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It doesn't always necessarily mean you have to be good to other human beings. No. Yes, it comes under the umbrella of goodness. But you have to be good to plants, for example. You have to be good to animals, for example. You have to be good, ultimately, to human beings. You cannot 
only be good to human beings and be bad to animals, be ruthless to plants, because everything that we have in our life on earth is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And every single molecule, every single atom praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There is nothing on earth that does not pray or that praises Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for its creation and for its blessings and its bounties and its mercy. So we have to be free from sin. We have to be free from committing crime. We have to be free from practicing unlawful activities. Now, what else can Imam Hussein alayhi salam teach us stand against those that oppress? Like we see in mass media, countries that have been oppressed. For example, Palestine. It has been, it has been oppressed for more than four decades. And no one is doing anything about it. Someone who has self-respect will not allow himself to drop down. Someone who has self-respect wouldn't allow him to open the doors of shaitan. Someone who has self-respect and self-dignity and self-honor will not go onto the path of shaitan. This is not the way of Imam Hussein salam. Anyone can tell you otherwise. But this is not the way towards the path of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. People go to Karbala, but the ultimate goal that they have to be going towards is not to go to the shrine. Go to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Go to, whenever you want to go for ziyara, do not go with the intention that you want to kiss the zari. No. Do not go with the intention that you want to see the golden dome. No. Go to visit your imam. Go to say salutations to the imam. Praise the imam. And you know what the A'imma alayhi salam say? That if you come and visit us, like the example of Imam Radha alayhi salam, Jannah will become wajib on you. You have to be so loyal. You have to be so content in visiting our imam that if you say assalamu alaykum, like the dua states, taruddu salami, that wa alaykum assalam is replied back to you. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states, if someone says salam, it is wajib upon someone to reply back with that salam. So why is it not that case when we go to visit our imams, when either we go to Karbala or go to Samira, go to Kazmain, go to the holy shrine of Imam Rada alayhi salam, go to Medina, go to Jannat al-Baqi, and when we say salam, we do not hear the reply. It is because ourselves, it's because our nafs cannot hear it. Maybe the Imam alayhi salam is definitely the Imam alayhi salam is replying back to you, but our nafs is not allowing us to hear the reply. So we have to be very careful. Try your best, dear brothers and sisters. Try utmost to stay on. If you are not on the path of Amir al Mumin Ali ibn Abi Talib, if you are not on the legacy of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam, bring yourself back. This is what Hur ibn Yazid al Riyahi did. He came back. He was Muslim, wasn't he? He stopped Imam Hussein alayhi salam. He made Imam Hussein alayhi salam camp further away from the water. It was him. He was the one that stopped water reaching the tents, reaching the Ahl al-Bayt alayhi salam. He was the one that was about to fight first. But what happened on that night, the eve of Ashura? That he placed his hands beside his, behind his back. And he stated to Imam Hussain alayhi salam, Halli min tawbah? Is there any room for me to come and repent? What did Imam Hussain alayhi salam say? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven you. Why shouldn't we forgive you? And then it came to the time that he said, I'm so ashamed of what I did. I want to be the first one to spill blood. I want my body to be the first body 
that drops down in your sacrifice, in the name of your sacrifice. And this is what he did. He went. He asked permission from Imam Hussein salam, and he went to the battlefield. Imam salam said, stop, take rest, come back. He didn't come back. He said, not until my body doesn't fall from this horse, I will not come back. I will not stop fighting. Just because what I did to you, just because what I did to the Ahlul Bayt and Imam Hussain was forced to ask people to bring him back to rest, then go fight. The only person, the only shaheed, the only martyr that his head wasn't separated from his body was Hur. Because he was free in this dunya and in the hereafter. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stated. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the chance to come back like Hur did. He was so ashamed. He was so ashamed what, of what he did, of what he performed, that he could not ask Hazrat Zainab alayha, for forgiveness. But Hazrat Zainab alayha, forgave him. Oh Allah, give us the opportunity to come back to our Lord. Oh Allah, give us the opportunity to repent. Oh Allah, give us the opportunity to ask for forgiveness for our sins. This is the real, if we look at the story, the tragedy of Karbala, every step that we take, every step that the companion took, it was a lesson. A lesson for us. A lesson to be taught, a lesson that was given every step of the way, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, even to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam, when the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam were restless, when it was too hot, when they knew what, was, what will happen, when Imam Hussain alayhi salam explained to Hazrat Zainab salam alayhi explained to the children, explained to the wives that this will happen, what did Imam Hussain alayhi salam say? They all complained. But what did Imam Hussain reply by? Allah yuhafidhukum wa yuhamikum. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your protector. Have hope in your Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is your protector and He is with you all the time. So nothing, do not worry about anything. Shahada is promised to me. Shahada will not be promised to you. At this moment of time, martyrdom is promised for me and whatever whatever happens they will want to take my head let me give you another example of izzat dignity and power and pride and honor in opposed to zillat shamefulness humiliation bani israel was a qawm where in which allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed more than 700 verses for them out of 700 verses 100 verses are only in Surah Al-Baqarah. What happened? Bani Israel was a qawm, was a society, was a community that faced both experiences. The experience of becoming high, proud, having honor, having dignity, having respect, and then toppled over and then having to face humiliation, having to face shame having to face abasement. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say in the Holy Quran in Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 137, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, wa tammat kalimatu rabbika al husna ala bani Israel. That he gave everything to Bani Israel. He gave, his, he gave honor to Bani Israel. He gave them whatever they wanted. They were so intact. They were so phenomenal in that era. They respected each other. They respected Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fulfilled their rights. In Surah Al-Baqarah verse number 47, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also states, 
بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يا بني إسرائيل اذكروا نعمتي التي أنعمت عليكم وأني فضلتكم على العالمين It was so phenomenal for them It was so amazing for them That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said that He made the nation of Bani Israel Amongst all the other nations So they were placed on a high ranking just because they obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best possible manner. They were free from Fir'aun. They escaped the tyranny of Fir'aun. Imam Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, when it came to the time in River Nile to go towards the ideology of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Bani Israel accompanied Hazrat Musa alayhi salam, they were free when Fir'aun uh, drowned in the water, in the river, then there was no one there to be an oppressor. So Hazrat Musa alayhi salam gave the invitation of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, delivered and spread knowledge. When they understood, the Qawm Bani, Bani Israel, when they understood everything, they obeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the most in the most best possible manner that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored them to be amongst the best of creation, amongst the best of the tribes. They built a very strong relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave them whatever they wanted. Whenever they prayed for something, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow, bestowed upon them favors bestowed upon them blessings, bestowed upon them mercy. This was one type, this was one era of Bani Israel. The other era of Bani Israel was the era of zillat, was the era of humiliation, was the era of shamefulness. How? The time when Hazrat Musa salam was not there, he left. And then what happened? They started to worship sheep. They started to worship animals, goats. What did Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say then? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Zuribat alayhimulzillatu wal maskana. Wherever they were found, a base shame stamped upon them. Whatever they did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala took away their mercy. They were shameful. They were shamed. Stamped upon them, Bani Israel was stamped with ruthlessness, was stamped with humiliation, was stamped with shame. Look at the first verse of Surah Al-A'raf and Surah Al-Baqarah in opposed to this verse. At one time, on one era of Bani Israel, they were the best qawm and favored upon any other qawm. And on the other hand, the same qawm, people left. People died in Bani Israel, but they still worshipped animals. They still worshipped sheep and goats. So see how pages turned. See how they were so humiliated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, disrespected by one another. Why? Just because they were worshipping something other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Shirk. Making partners, for example. This is very important. Be very careful of your duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Do not forget who your Lord is. Do not forget how powerful your Lord is. Do not say to yourself that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not watching your every move. Indeed, know that He is watching your every move. Alam ta'lam bi anna Allah yara everything that you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching. Therefore, Abu Abdullah al Hussein came to the conclusion that him paying allegiance to a tyrant oppressor will not work. This will destroy the religion of Islam. Paying allegiance to an oppressor, paying allegiance to a tyrant, paying allegiance to one who disrespects religion, as we explained in the previous talk, that Yazid was the center, was the first person to bring the ideology of innovation, bid'at. Mar'a, they asked about 
the uh, tragedy of Karbala and why Imam alayhi salam after that, Imam Sajjad alayhi salam, Imam Baqir alayhi salam, Imam Ja'far Sadiq alayhi salam, Imam Kazim, Imam Rada alayhi salam, until Imam Hassan Asghar alayhi salam, why did they not fight against these oppressors? Why was there no Karbala again? It was because that Imam alayhi salam took down the roots, spoiled their roots, spoiled the roots of Yazid and took him down with one blow. So this is the real reason when Imam salam stood for the truth, stood for haqq, stood for the truthfulness of the Ahlul Bayt salam, this is when the enemy became weak. This is when the enemy wanted to retaliate. This is when the enemy wanted to annihilate all the ideology of what? Of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is what exactly what Yazid wanted to do. If he came in power, there would be no Islam now. So dear brothers and sisters, not only Shias, but our dear brothers, Ahli Sunnah, and everyone else, know that we owe everything to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Not only Shias, the Sunni brothers also owe their lives to Imam Hussain alayhi salam. Because Yazid, what did he want to do? He wanted to annihilate the fikr, the intellectual cause of oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted to bring back the era of Fir'aun. He wanted to bring back the era of Pharaoh. When Yazid was knocked down, Marwan was also knocked down with his ideology. Safwan was also knocked down with his ideology. Abdullah bin Marwan was also knocked down. These were the people, Sulaiman, Walid, they used to swim in alcohol. And then at the same time, they used to stand on the prayer mat. This is not Islam. This is not what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to us. This was not the legacy of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So anyone that asks why the Imams after Imam Sajjad salam lived in the era of Yazid, didn't he? Why did he not stand up? He did. He showed everyone that this is the oppressor. But Imam Hussain salam always did. He, he did his work before he left this dunya. And then all the Imams after came and Distinguish between the oppressors and the rightful Khalifas. That was the whole ideology. Imam Hassan alayhi salam, he signed a peace treaty with Muawiyah, yes. But that was for sulh. That was to revive the religion of Islam. That was to protect. That was to protect the religion of Islam. Imam Hussain alayhi salam saved the religion of Islam. Because Yazid wanted to bring in bid'at. He wanted everyone to forget about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He wanted to bring back the zaman al-jahiliya. So we have to stand, dear brothers and sisters, in every era. From the time Imam Hussain alayhi salam stood for till today. We, we see this in our mass media. We see it in our daily lives. That there is oppression going on. You see someone, for example in the streets being oppressed. Help them, stop and help them. This is what our Imams did. If the Imam of our time was present in our lives now, he would do the same. That was the biggest lesson of Karbala. One of the biggest lessons of Karbala was to have dignity, have honor and do not fall down to oppressors. Do not bend your knee and pay allegiance to the ones that shower you with gold, will throw gold at you. Do not think that that gold will last forever. It's a very temporary, lustful desire, yes. But what is everlasting is the hope of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam because it runs in our veins. We have to have that strong ideology that anyone that comes in front of us that talks badly about our Imams, we have to stand against them. We have to stand and stand for our own honor. 
stand for our the honor of our religion the dignity of our religion what did what our religion has taught us amir al mu'minin ali ibn abi talib has a very beautiful hadith that starts by saying oh allah i take refuge in you from seven musibats from seven calamities i take refuge from you that i want to i don't want to fall in the trap of these seven calamities what are them calamities they are not the calamities the musiba of illness no they are not the musiba of for example your checks being bounced back no they are not the musiba of for example poverty or for example any other thing or bankrupts someone is being bankrupt is is musiba no temporary musiba that is imam Sadiq alayhi salam whenever someone came to him complaining about poverty complaining about money complaining about wealth and no means to eat imam alayhi salam replied by saying alhamdulillah alladhi yaj'al musiba lam yaj'al musiba alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alladhi lam yaj'al musibati fi dini that i thank allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for not placing calamities in my religion there is no naqs in my religion people can say yes we don't have anything to eat but it's not the fault of the religion people can become unwealthy yes it's not the problem of the religion that's a problem of one that's a problem of the lifestyle of that person a person that doesn't pray is classed as musiba not the person who's ill A person that does not pray is classed as musibah. This is what Imam Ali Salam is trying to indicate to us. A person, a father, how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam states that, woe to those parents that grieve for their children, for illness, and when it comes down to namaz, they take it lightly. Our dear parents, don't grieve over your child if he receives a grade B. instead of an a maybe he's tried but don't grieve over it or for example he has done something it's a temporary thing don't grieve over it don't prolong that don't think that is a musiba for example an illness a disease for example don't think that is a musiba everlasting musiba no if allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to take the life of someone without an illness will take it allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave us obligations to perform if you do not perform them then it's called classed as musiba going back to the narration of amir al mu'minin ali ibn abi talib he states that be very beautifully states in the hadith that i want to be i want to take refuge from these seven categories He stated this in his Khutbat al-Jum'ah. In the Friday sermon, you'll find this in Nahj al-Balagha. Amir al-Mu'mineen Ali ibn Abi Talib states, Allahumma a'udhu bika min sab'a masa'ib. Number one, alimun zalla. Number two, abidun malla. Number three, mu'minun dalla. Number four, mu'taminun ghalla. Number five, Azizun Zella. Number six, Fakirun Iatella. And number seven, Ghaniyun Akalla. How beautiful is it? How beautiful is this dua? How beautiful is this sermon? That even the sound of this Arabic is a rhythm to our eye. It is a rhythm for our ears. Amir al-Mu'mineen, very beautiful. This is Amir al-Mu'mineen we're talking about. the best of the best of the holy prophet sallallahu alaihi wa alihi wasallam what does he state number 1 alimun zalla with a zal alimun zalla a scholar that has changed his tracks the rails he is following the right path he is following allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was he was guiding other people he was reciting the holy quran he was reciting his namaz he was fasting he was doing amr bil ma'ruf nahyan al munkar he even went to hajj but later on he changed now he has a clean shave for example 
Now he is committing sins publicly. What happened to him? Alimun Zalla. Amir al Mumni Ali ibn Abi Talib states that an alim, a scholar that has malfunctioned his brain, a scholar that has diverted the attention from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to shaitan. One day, Abu Hanifa, the, the school of Hanafiya, all follow Abu Hanifa, the thought, the ideology of Abu Hanifa. One day he was passing by in the streets and he saw uh, a young girl, little girl, about to go through an area which was slippery. So he saw that the girl was about to go and she was not paying attention and he said, stop, be careful, be careful. Be careful that you don't, uh, you don't drop, you don't fall down. And the little girl turns back to Abu Hanifa and she states that you be careful you be careful that you do not drop because if you drop millions will drop after you you will take down millions me if I drop it's only me I'll go down but you be careful duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala remember a scholar remember those that are the leaders of the community don't become zalla. Don't divert your attentions to the attentions of shaitan. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the abundance, opportunity, the capacity to worship him and him alone, inshaAllah. Number two, abidun malla. A worshipper. Abid, a worshipper who is tired all the time. He's prayed two units of prayer and his legs start shaking. He can't get up again. He doesn't have any strength. To get up to pray another two units of prayer. Abidun Malla. This is something that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't want. For example, a person is in prayer and he's continuously yawning, continuously yawning. He's getting tired. When we focus on the true reality of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then what is yawning all about? Imam Sajjad was stood in prayer one time in a place and as soon as he said Allahu Akbar everything shut down everything shut down ar around him wherever he was there was a fire and people started yelling fire, fire, nar, nar they took out the fire immediately and eventually they took it out but then as soon as Imam Sajjad finished his prayer they said to him, Ibn Rasulullah, you were praying and all the things around us were around us burnt now. And we said to you, we called out, we shouted, and nar and nar and nar. You know what Imam Sajjad replied by saying? Whilst you were saying an nar and nar and nar for this dunya to be to be to take out the fire of this dunya, I was taken out the fire of the akhirah. You have to be so intact, so your, your, your salat has to be in so khushu' and khudu' that nothing around you matters. Look at the greatness of our Imam Salam. Be careful towards your duties towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever you supplicate, for example, supplicate. You don't have to supplicate, for example, Abu Hamza Thumali in your prayers. No. You don't have to stand in prayer and stand and recite Dua al kumail in your prayers. No. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given you choice. You can recite. One day, someone came to a masjid for tabliq and in the holy month of Ramadan, iftar, and uh, they said, Ya Sheikh, can you recite dua at the end? He stood up in front of everyone, and everyone was just about to finish iftari. And he said, do you, want, do you really want me to do dua? Do you want me to do dua that includes Abu Hamza Thumali? Do you want me to do a, perform a dua that includes Sahifa Sajjadiyah? 
Do you want me to perform du'a that, perform, that includes du'a al-kumail? Do you want me to perform du'a that has Josh and Kabir inside it? Everyone looked at one another and said, Oh, why have you asked this person for du'a? If he starts prayer, we're going to end up staying here till suhoor. And everyone wanted a, a path to escape. But what happened? He said, I'm going to do a dua that is only consistent of one line. And we've all heard this dua, which concludes everything, which has everything. What is that dua? That dua starts by, Allahumma inni as'aluka khayra ma sa'alaka bihi ibaduka salihoon wa a'udhu bika min musta'adha minhu ibaduka al-mukhlisoon. We recite it. When do we recite it? The time of Eid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this line, total is one line, one and a half line. Everything, everything, whatever goodness, Allah says, the dua consists of, oh Allah, whatever goodness there is, I want goodness for everyone else. Whatever badness is, take it away, take it away from us. This is the dua that we can recite, not hard. You don't necessarily have to stand in prayer for hours and hours and hours or sit down all night and pray. No. If you have the capacity, then do so. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala likes those that pray, likes those that perform dua. Those that want to take the easy way out, let's say, and not stand hours and hours in prayer, Imam alayhi salam has taught us a very, very noble and profound way to do so and that is by saying four sentences four sentences first sentence that conclude everything that consists everything in your dua number one alhamdulillah ala kulli ni'mah that you are praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for every blessing that he has bestowed upon you number two astaghfirullah min kulli dham you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all your sins Number three, أعوذ بالله من كل الشر That you are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take refuge from all badness. And number four, final point, is أسأل الله من كل خير And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring abundance, to bring goodness to everything. Inshallah, we will complete the hadith in the upcoming uh, program, inshallah. السلام على الحسين وعلى علي بن الحسين وعلى يا ابن الشبيب إن بكيت على الحسين حتى تصيب دموعك على خدك غفر الله لك كل ذنب أذنبته صغيرا كان أو كبيرا قليلا أو كان كثيرا السلام على ساكن كربلاء السلام على بكت ملائكة السماء السلام على المرمل بالدماء السلام على غريب الغرباء السلام على 
قد تعاد السلام على الرؤوس المجلى السلام على الشيب الخطيب السلام على بدن السليب يوال هدت أنيمات that touched the soil of كربلاء Imam alayhi salam used to rush towards the body. He used to rush so that the enemies used to go away and do nothing to the body. As soon as they saw Imam al Hussein rush to the body, rush to the mat, they used to scatter just because they knew how ferocious Imam alayhi salam was. So Imam alayhi salam used to pick up the bodies and carry them back to the tents and give the gift to the families. Even the body of Ali al-Akbar, we all know that it was Irban, Irban. Imam alayhi salam could not pick up the body, so he called the youth of Bani Hashim to help him. You've all heard that Azad Qasim alayhi salam was asked, How do you see death? He stated, Ahla min al when Azad Qasim salam went to the battlefield, he called Imam al Hussein for the final time and to bid farewell. He went and he went to the battlefield and he did not look back. He fought the enemies, but as soon as he dropped down from his horse, he called al Imam al Hussein. Imam al salam rushed to the body. He saw blood gushing out from his body. Imam alayhi salam placed the head of Azad Qasim alayhi salam on his lap, but it was too late. He carried the body back to the tents. He carried in the arms of the body of Qasim. We know that there was only two bodies that stayed there. That there was no one to take it back. The first his body was the body of Bani Hashim. Hazrat Abbas alayhi salam, he was left to rest near Al Qamam. We don't know what they did to the body of Abba Abdullah. We don't know what they did to the body of Abbas. The second was the body of Abba Abdullah that rested. There was no one to bring it back to the church. There was no one to protect the body of Abba Abdullah. They did whatever they wanted to do to the body. Imam alayhi salam was the comforter of all the martyrs. He used to go to the bodies and bring them back to the tent. But there was nobody to bring the body of Abba Abdullah back to the church. He was still breathing as soon as he fell from the horse. He was still alive and breathing after he fell down. I wish they stopped at that time. But then a cry, a loud voice in the back, a voice that cried out, Man Al Hussein, who will take their revenge from Hussein? So everyone started to throw arrows. Whatever they had in their hand, they used to throw at Imam Al Hussein. 
They did so much to the body that I can't explain. So much so that Azat Zainab Salamullahi Alayya came to the body and she could not recognize the body. She stated, Anta Akhi, are you really my brother? Anta Ibn Walidati. Are you really the son of Fatima? Sallallahu alayka ya Aba Abdullah Wa sayalamu alladheena zalamu Ayya munqalabin yanqalibun